We're here at Close Sutton in County Carlo, the base of Willie Mullins. 94 Cheltenham Festival winners and Ireland's multiple champion jumps trainer is looking for more success at this year's meeting. We're going behind the scenes here at Close Sutton to take a closer look at some of the superstars. Willie Mullins, the winning most trainer in Cheltenham Festival history, enjoyed his first festival winner back in 1995, courtesy of tourist attractions shock 25 to 1 success in the Supreme Novices hurdle. Mullins was 38 at the time and now aged 67, he has had a further six winners in the traditional festival curtain raiser and boasts a strong hand going into this year's Renault. His team is headed by Ballyburn, Tully Hill and the highly touted Mystical Power. The latter is unbeaten in three starts to date and created a deep impression when winning the Moscow Flyer Novices Hurdle at Punchestown in January. It is Mystical Power taking the sky bet Moscow Flyer Novice by storm. In second place is Jigoro, a long way clear of James's Gate, who will win the third place. Things have not always gone to plan for Mullins at the Cheltenham Festival. Mystical Power's dam Annie Power fell at the final flight in the 2015 Mayor's Hurdle, saving the bookies millions of pounds in the process. As they approach the last flight, bit of a puzzle behind them in third position. Annie Power at the last flight, he's down! Annie Power has gone well in front of the last glance. Melody launched his runner up to Polly Beecham. However, she and jockey Ruby Walsh gained recompense 12 months later in the 2016 Champion Hurdle. The horse that now resides in Annie Power's old box could be argued to be one of the close Sutton bankers going into this year's festival. Dino Blue extending her winning run in the Paddy's Rewards Club Grade 1 chase for Mark Walsh and Willie Mullins. The JP McManus owned Dino Blue has progressed to a new level this year, winning two of her three starts. She is set to step up in trip as she heads for the Grade 2 Mrs Paddy Power Mayor's Chase on the fourth and final day of the festival. Broker Vega, who's going to battle extremely hard and takes up the running. And Crevega is going to make history. The joy of six for Crevega. She wins again. Perhaps the horse most synonymous associated with Mullins and festival glory is the mighty mare Crevega. Alongside Ruby Walsh, the pair landed six successive renewals of the mare's hurdle as she became the first horse to win six races at the Cheltenham Festival. Looking to this year's mare's hurdle, Lossy Mouth is the current favourite for the two and a half mile contest. The flashy grey has already enjoyed festival success, winning impressively in last year's Triumph Hurdle. She made her seasonal reappearance over course and distance in the International Hurdle as she stepped into open company for the first time, producing a career best effort en route to a nine and a half length success. She's absolutely cruising up the running. She's clear by eight lengths over Love of Wa and Rubo. And she looks a class act on a return to action. Last year's Triumph Hurdle winner, Lossy Mouth, makes a winning return and takes the Unibet Hurdle brilliantly. The five-year-old headlines a strong hand for Mullins in the race, which includes Ashro Diamond, who returned on the same January afternoon as her stable companion to plunder Grade 2 honours at Doncaster. She already boasts Grade 1 winning form over this trip, following her victory in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at Ferry House last April. An enviable hand for Mullins, as he looks to extend his domination in the race with a 10th victory from just 17 runnings of the contest. The only race Mullins has enjoyed more success at the Cheltenham Festival in is the Grade 1 Weatherby's Champion Bumper. His first victory in the contest came back in 1996, courtesy of Witherall Witch, with cousin Vinny adding a sixth win in 2008 in what was to be a family affair for Team Close Sutton. Cousin Vinny's on the far side, Korski Royale on the near side from Zorito, then Shaw Acres behind these as they race inside the final 100 yards. Cousin Vinny just drifting to the centre, Korski Royale is trying to close the gap, but it's Cousin Vinny holding on under young Patrick Mullins, and Cousin Vinny wins! A first festival victory for Sun Patrick and a maiden triumph in a race. He has gone on to win on a further two occasions. We spoke to Patrick at Close Sutton as he discussed the yard's possible runners in the champion bumper as well as the national hunt chase and the fox hunters. Races Patrick has also enjoyed success in. Plenty towards the top of the market for Willie, Jasmine DeVoe, Maureen Cantico who we saw recently, uh, you ought to know 
at the moment. Just a, a word maybe on Jasmine DeVoe first. Yeah, it was very impressive in Nice. Um, look, I, I think the form is, you can pick all in the form very easy. The second horse was beaten similar distances in three different bumpers. So um, it's hard to know exactly what he did, but visually it was very impressive. So um, the Crawfords were very sweet in him when he won his point of point as well. Um, so it's hard to knock him. The other two towards the top for Willie are Cantico and you ought to know. What about those two? Cantico was very good in Navin. Um, disappointed us at Christmas. Um, but I mean, FIFA got beat at Christmas before coming back and winning the champ bumper. Um, I also managed to get Alaho beaten that bumper on Christmas. So it is a bumper that, you know, can, uh, you, just because you get beaten, it doesn't mean that you're not a good horse. Um, he was impressive yesterday. I think nicer ground will suit him. Uh, he likes a strong gallop. Um, and he's definitely a horse to look forward to over jumps. You ought to know was running in the summer. Um, he's a big, tall, big, tall, angular horse. Um, ran a cracker at the at DRF. Um, obviously, was well beaten by Emmett Horst, who's now out. Um, he's entitled to maybe come on from that because he'd had a break. Um, so he'll have to be he'll have to be banged there in the mix as well. So any any others that we might not have said that might go for the bumper? Uh, our gentle boy is related to Briar Hill, um, who obviously won the champion bumper. He won very well on Jody Townend in Fairy House. I was away in Doncaster that day. Um, he's a horse, a bit like exact same as Briar Hill. Doesn't show very much, uh, you know. Isn't maybe a specimen to look at, but on the race course, he um, he seems a different animal. So you'd have to take him seriously. One race that you uh, you always quite like to win is the National Hunt Chase. At the moment, Embassy Gardens is favourite, but Nick Rocket in there as well. If you were to have the choice, would would it be Embassy Gardens if he went there? Well, look, there there are a couple of great options there. Um, Embassy Gardens obviously look very impressive twice. Only has the two runs. Uh, it used to be a case you'd prefer a horse maybe more experienced, but since they brought in the new rules, it's a smaller field and um, you can maybe get away with less experience. So, look, he disappointed in the Albert Barrett last year. That was a very different start. Uh, that's a very crowded start, a rush down to the first, and he just running to, ended up running too keen. In the four mile chase, I'd hope he'd settle better, he'd need to. Um, Nick Rocket ran very well uh, at the at Navin yesterday in the, t in the t 10 up behind American Mike. He's not very big, um, mm. but he jumps, so I think better ground will definitely suit him. Um, so, you know, he's also in the Brown Advisory, he possibly could go there. Manelica Kuna ran well yesterday. Again, I think he's a horse that better ground suits well. Um, but he, you know, he was second in Shetland, but he, do, he you know, he, he's not a horse that settles particularly well. Um, and that's always a worry in a four mile chase or in the national chase. So, uh, yeah, at the moment you say Embassy Gardens maybe ticks a lot of the boxes, um, but any of the three would be a great, a great ride. Is Embassy Gardens one that, from a stamina point of view, you'd have no real concerns? I don't think so. I mean, he won a two and a half mile bumper at Leprechaun first time out, um, and like I said, it's a horse that settles, and you know he's a he's a big chasing looking horse. Um, so as far as I could see, I'd be happy with the distance. Yeah. And the final one, just the Hunter's Chase, good old Bill away. Um, a bit unlucky yesterday against it's on the line. That was a dramatic finish, but what, what kind of what did you make of that effort and looking ahead to Cheltenham? It was a brilliant, brilliant race from you know we we geez, the pace was so hot. Um, you know I think I was looking back at it, the two horse in front went faster over the the three down the back than they did in the two mile chase. Um, so you know and they they obviously got tired and Bill away we we came and run it wasn't Cheltenham we didn't feel like having a particularly hard race from a mile out, um, but. Uh, I, th I thought I was going to come past um, it's on the line but when I got to him he picked up again he's a very idle horse and look he's five years younger but you know our fella has never won first time out um, so he's going to come on for it and uh, I can't wait to ride him again and is there one horse that maybe a lot of people haven't mentioned that you're looking forward to seeing at Cheltenham one that you've seen at home who's kind of catching your eye um, geez, there's not much that's under the radar there but um, uh, even out of the superstars is there one that particularly is impressing you yeah, well, look, I, I just I think a horse that I think a horse that maybe isn't getting the credit he deserves is I think reading Tommy wrong. Uh, you know, he he really um, he's not flashy. People are saying that Little Antique had to make his own running. Little Antique in my book got the run of the race in um, Nice. He got a, a, an easy lead after the second race, second hurdle. Reading Tommy wrong was the only horse that got into the race. Um, so I, I'm reading that race the other way to most people, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for it. Mullins could have a team of up to 70 horses for this year's four-day festival as he inches closer to the magical century mark. Currently residing on 94 winners, the latest of which was Galloping Deschamps' sensational victory in the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup last March, Jump Racing's Blue Ribboned event had been a race that eluded Mullins up until 2019, but he now goes in search of his fourth Gold Cup crown in the last six years as Galloping bids to retain his title. Having started his campaign this season with a defeat in the John Durkin Memorial, he has looked back to his best in two subsequent starts, landing the Savills Chase and the Irish Gold Cup at Leopardstown. We spoke to the man who arguably knows the horse best, his groom and rider, Adam Connolly. 
Adam, how long have you been Calipin de Champs' groom? Uh, since he first came. So, uh, I don't know how many years ago that is now. Every day is like the same. But, yeah, when he first came in, I got him here and he hasn't moved ever since. And what's he like every day? A lot more straightforward than people would think. Um, a lot of people think there's high pressure and minding him, but to me, he's just the same horse. You know, I know him before he was winning Gold Cups and that, so he was getting bitten, rated hurdles. <laughs> so. And obviously you've enjoyed numerous Cheltenham Festival glory since, and the Martin Piper Gold Cup, etc. but there's been some bumps in the road. A lot of people said when he was younger that he was a little bit fizzy, but from the way that you're talking, that, that was never really the case at home? Yeah, he was just probably more of an overachiever. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make two, three lengths every fence, and he just kind of had to keep a little lid on that. He's gotten better now. He's probably more mature and settled down a bit, but even pulling him up on the gallop and that he can still be put the head to the ground. So, And waking up every morning, what's it like to get aboard a Gold Cup runner? A lot easier. Gold Cup winner. <laughs> a lot easier to go to work anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's brilliant. Look, any day you get to spend time with these horses is exceptional and just lucky to be a part of it. And in terms of the Gold Cup again this year, do you feel that he's as good as last year? Is he better horse this year in his work at home? Has there been any change that you've noticed? or? To me, he's every inch the same horse last year, this year. You know, even though I got bit, punched on festival, bit into John Dorkin, he still felt the same horse. So I was always happy with him. We were just more scratching our head and a bit puzzled. But... And what's it like getting on board him every day? Is there added pressure going into you know, a month out from the festival? How do you manage that as well? Uh, I'd probably play it down now, but I don't really feel the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, like when you're riding him every day, you were riding him before he was a Gold Cup winner, so it's not as if you're kind of getting out of your car and getting into a Formula One car. Mm -hmm. Never been in one, you know, he's been the same horse that I've had all the time. So, And when he is racing, how are you during a race? Are you a, a nervous customer? Do you keep it cool? Not great until he gets over the last. Okay. That moment, will probably live there for a long time. I, you know, I used to jump up and down like a mad thing. And... Uh, when he fell that year, no, that kind of settled that. <laughs> well, because I guess you've had those highs and lows, haven't you, at the festival itself? Yeah. You've had the, the wins, but also that, I mean, obviously that won't stick in the memory, but at the time was that, you know, when you see your horse go down at last, thankfully he was okay, but what emotions go through your mind as the groom? Yeah, um, like I suppose, I've never actually watched the race back, mm -hmm. and if the replay was on, I'd look away at before he files. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think, to me anyway, horses are confidence. They feed off confidence, and if I don't look at it, he won't remember it. You know, like, anyway. And what does Galloping de Champ mean to you? Oh, he gets me over bed, and anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I sure look, it's just exceptional to be a part of it. You know, there's a big team here, everyone's involved, and I just kind of get to be in the driving seat till the race. But... Do you get a bit of chat banter from the other? Guys who work here, you know, that you get to look after Galloping de Champ. Is there a little bit of cheeky needle? Ah, uh, there'll be a few rusty, rusty stab wounds <laughs> now. Um, but you look, we all kind of do it to each other. You know, it's a bit of crack, a bit of laughing and that, and we're always there anyway. So you can't go too far without one or two, two being thrown at you. <laughs> and kind of, there's a there's a month to go. I guess it's a normal steady build up to a big race. But d does much change in that time? How many times like would you ride him out usually a week? Yeah, um, no, it should be the same, straightforward, kind of from any race. Same coming out after Christmas is going into the Dublin Racing Festival. You know, you bring him back, freshen him up, mm -hmm. get him counter and a few bits of work and then off he goes again. So it's still very straightforward. And when you actually travel over to Cheltenham, do you take him around the prey ring as well during the race or is your work done as soon as he gets to Cheltenham itself? No, uh, I probably won't leave his side when he gets on the lorry. Okay. Um, that's kind of me, you know. Uh, Go over, ride him out, walk him in the evenings, look after him, brush him, same, really as home. <laughs> and then when he gets to Friday, yeah. he'll be beside him again. So. And how will you sleep on the Thursday before the Gold Cup Friday? Well, I love my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Cheers, thanks. Some interesting thoughts from the man behind the horse, Adam Connolly. It's quite possible that Galloping Deschamps could be winner number 100 for Willie Mullins. Another horse who could help Mullins on his way to the milestone is the hugely popular State Man. The eight-time Grade 1 winner has been a model of consistency, with his only defeat in his last 11 runs coming at the hands of Constitution Hill in last year's Champion Hurdle. 
The seven-year-old has been flawless in his three starts this season, all of which came at the top level, including last time out as he retained his crown in the Irish champion hurdle. State man putting this race to bed from Bob Ollinger on Perry Pass and deep in the closing stages it's wall to wall grade ones at the Dublin Racing Festival for both State man and Willie Mullins as Paul Town and right back to back winners of the Chanel Farm Irish Champion Hurdle. Between them, Galloping de Champ and State Man boast 16 Grade 1 victories and the pair spearhead another formidable Mullins Battalion which are set to descend on Presbury Park. State Man's County Hurdle victory featured amongst 10 winners for Mullins, a record amount for any trainer at one Cheltenham Festival back in 2022. And so the question remains, will this Cheltenham Festival see the Master of Close Sutton record a century of winners at the meeting and create yet more history?